We moved here in 1958. My dad bought this place and the pasture over there, the east half was hayland and the other half was pasture. You put up hay for the cows and then you fed the cows. The drought of 76 come along and he sold all the cows. So there was a cross fence between the hayland and the pasture. So that was our rotation until the neighbors come along and they didn't want to change the salt back and forth, so they just opened the gate. So we had one big pasture. Over the last few years, I've kind of taken hold of the place here somewhat, probably the last 10, 12 years now, and trying to do a better job of our rotational program, um, doing some water projects through the, the Game of Fish. Um, they're helping us out with some fencing and just trying to do a better job with our grasslands, trying to keep some grass left in the fall, taking care of the weeds, water. That's kind of our goal right now. I'm actually a full-time auctioneer. So three to four days a week, I'm doing auctioning. I work for Hub City Livestock out of Aberdeen, South Dakota on sale days. I get fortunate enough to be able to travel around the country in the North Dakota, South Dakota, Minnesota looking at people's livestock for us to, to sell through our livestock market. As far as like some of the water things, the tires into the water tanks, we've taken some different things from other people that looks like it was a success for them. And we've translated back in here. The cattle, I truly enjoy. Um, the horses, even more so. The one thing that I love, um, just like this morning, a cloudy, cool morning, horses are feeling good cattle are feeling good and you can go out in that pasture and there are places that that grass is belly deep on them horses and to see them cattle just content and happy they're not wild they're not hungry you know they're so content out in the pasture our goals is to manage the, the grass the best we can the water that we have and utilize that pasture we are starting to add 10 to 30 head of cattle per pasture by rotating, using the water that we have. Even on some of the dry years, we're still finding that it's still working. And if we can leave some of this pasture, some of this grass left in the fall, is a huge thing for us to have a start in the spring. It's not always about individual animal performance, but return on maybe the acre is a, way, a better way to look at, at the operational profitability. Can I raise more pounds of beef in a sustainable, profitable, and resilient way? And Mark, I think, attested to that. Um, you know, a, going from 110, say, to 120, um, you're looking at, uh, what, a 17% increase in carrying capacity? Those can be real dollars if you can protect the resource. Biodiversity is, is huge, and whether we're talking about the number of insects in an area, the number of different kinds of wildlife in an area, or whether we're talking about different grass or wildflower species on the landscape, everything has a role in nature somewhere. And so if we can do something that's going to increase our, our biodiversity and the number of plants or wildflowers and the different kinds that we have in an area. We, we might only see one wildflower, but it might be that one species of flower that an insect or a bird needs to survive. And so when we're doing things like prairie restorations and these grazing management types of things, and we come to a place or we're working in an area like Northeast South Dakota where, where we have a lot of potential to increase biodiversity, we're gonna try and use seed mixes and restorations that are as diverse as they can be. That biodiversity can help mitigate things like weed problems. If we have something green and growing and flowering and leafy on the landscape at all times of the year, it leaves a very, very narrow window for something like thistle to even creep into a landscape. It, it just can't function there because other plants are already occupying that space. When we get up and we talk about things like alternative management, rotation, biological control, biodiversity, Calvin was one of those individuals that said, yeah, we're doing those things, we're doing as much as we can, we need to know that it's going to be profitable. We need to know that 
these things make sense in the big picture. And I always cherish producers that make us think very deeply about their profitability and their resilience on the land. It, it's easy to talk about the wildlife and the animals, but if we don't keep the people profitable, knowledgeable, and it sounds a little cliche, but sustainable, everything that we do as research professionals really doesn't matter. By doing some of the things that we are, we have less problems with health issues. Um, we don't have the foot rot, we don't have the eye problem, and we sure seem to think that our cattle are quieter by moving them every five to seven days, and, um, and our gains are better than they have been in the past years. So we've been doing this for a lot of years. It's just something that's bred into us. We want to take care of the land. We want to take care of our water sources the best we can. That's been a big part of our operation.